Hello everyone um, and welcome back to another episode and, and today uh, I'm joined with Dan and, and, and Dan has, uh, has Crohn's, uh, has Crohn's disease um, and it's going to be a really nice chat so thanks Dan for coming on today. Yeah that's all right. Yeah um, could, could you do like a little introduction yourself uh, uh, just to start? Yeah sure yeah so I'm almost 25 now and I uh, got diagnosed with Crohn's disease in 2019. Um, basically, they thought it was appendicitis, but it wasn't. And I just got the news out of the blue that you've got Crohn's disease. So I haven't been diagnosed long, really, compared to some, but it's long enough for me at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, when you think about it, it doesn't seem that long away, does it? <laughs> no, it did. It, it's hard to explain, you know, like I was uh, 21-ish, 21, yeah, when I was diagnosed. Like time's gone quite quick, but um, I think looking back, I was probably misundiagnosed for quite a while before. Um, but a lot's happened in those four years, like with me, so. Yeah. Yeah, like it is, um, it's difficult, isn't it, when you get diagnosed because you're unaware of it and I uh, like is was that the first time you heard of Crohn's in 2019 when you got told you got Crohn's yeah absolutely like it sounds daft but I was a medic but I still never heard really of Crohn's disease and IBD um and I didn't know what it was when I got diagnosed with it I thought it was some disease that is life limiting as in that was my first question was does it limit how long you're gonna live and uh that was like the main thing i asked you know because when they yeah. when they say disease at the end i think that's the first thing you think isn't it yeah you kind of think of death and doom and gloom don't you um yeah because i spoke to other people with different like different conditions like illnesses and um and there are some that out there not Crohn's, but there's some out there that there is a time limit, like scale, uh, prediction of how long you could live. Um, and and people so see out that, and it is something you, you worry about. But when you think of disease, you think all the worst, don't you? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And um, especially something you haven't heard of or isn't really spoken about much. And I feel since my diagnosis, um, I think you become more aware. So you, we notice these documentaries that speak about it more, but before you know about it, you don't really notice it, do you? No, no, you don't. I, I don't think we, you probably won't pay attention to these like things to talk about it and like, like just, just put it aside. Like you, you don't not really fussed about it because you don't need to be if you don't have it. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it is, it's a difficult one to explain as well, isn't it? Like yeah it's difficult um you know everyone's different you've got different types of Crohn's different areas and then you obviously got colitis as well so it's a very broad spectrum and I, I don't think everyone is as educated as they should be on it you know yeah yeah like it is it is it is it's hard because yeah, like you say you have all these different types of Crohn's um and fix everyone differently um and i think i think you feel the worst like surgery like are oh, you gonna have surgery in your life or you could have stomas because like all, all that kind of stuff you you're fearful aren't you yeah i think obviously the stoma or or a bag as they call it was my main concern because as soon as the word crohn's or colitis pops up you think of the extreme in the scenario don't you and um, like me, myself, I've had surgery twice and I don't have a bag now because I'm lucky in the area that it affects. So it's not all doom and gloom, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do well. I'd say 95% are doing well, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like I see, I see people do, do well, like um, more, I suppose, um, high profile people like, um, like famous people are, telling their stories now like having crimes like actors dancers comedians even so um it, i think that helps like bring more awareness saying that like that it's not just 
but it's not just rare rare it's it's rare enough that you can you actually know people that have it yeah there's a lot of people that have it you know like the other day i was actually googling famous people who had it and there's way more than i realized and you would never know they have it just because they don't really speak about it which obviously is, is sad because everyone wants a private life but you realize how much like some of these famous faces are struggling and mm. they can't really speak about it you know yeah it's i can i i, I cannot i imagine how hard it can be for like, a famous person to have an illness because they don't they fear to talk about it because more people are going to comment on them because they're more yeah. well known um and yeah it's hard um but i, I appreciate it for them talking about it though because um ignoring probably don't read half of their comments they get on like a social media post or something <laughs> just put the photo up and yeah not read it. i think that happens with most separate uh, like famous people anyway um it, i think it'd be a bit quite rare for them to read every single comment because it'd be there all day <laughs> yeah that's true yeah 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 so dan like do, do, do you want to like talk us like through like i suppose like the like your diagnosis a little bit like how that was how that came about of Crohn's yeah so my diagnosis was um it was just pain in the appendix area so the terminal ileal area the bottom right of my abdomen um that is where I got pain and it was 2018 they took my appendix out and nothing more was said uh, but a year later, I got the pain there again. And they obviously, they thought this is old because he's got no appendix. <laughs> um, so I had an ultrasound and basically they pretty much could define it was Crohn's or had a generally a good idea that it was Crohn's from that. And that's when they came in and basically said, well, we don't think it's this. We think it's, you've got Crohn's disease. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Because I don't present, you know, I never had, like I was in, I was, as I said, I was a medic in the Navy, so I was relatively fit. Um, I was fit, doing my job, um, but I just noticed this niggling pain that I would get. Um, I didn't have the problem of going to the toilet loads. I still don't, really. Um, it's just pain. And then I started to notice the fatigue after that. That got worse. Um so it's really just pain and fatigue, but I just got diagnosed after that ultrasound. Um, and then I got kept in hospital for about a week uh, to get the inflammation down. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's quite interesting you say like you was at, like you, you worked at like, the Navy as, as well, because that is a, a, like a, a big change, isn't it? Because um, from doing that to getting a diagnosis um, and then kind of to changing property what you do now it, it must have been like 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 was it like like with doing that in the navy did you enjoy that like when you was doing it yeah so i i i obviously joined the navy thinking you know this is a career for life stable good career i joined with no health problems at all i was fine and then in 2019 i got diagnosed with crohn's and then epilepsy out the blue at 21 in the same year um so to get those diagnosis and then start to feel the symptoms and then obviously realize at the same time and understand that I was going to lose my job because as you know the armed forces are mega strict on their medical standards um that was hard and regarding the Crohn's and my capabilities I think I'm only just starting to accept it now um three four years later because as you know um i was at uni doing nursing but the the demands of uni and then having to work part-time while at uni is so hard with crohn's disease <laughs> it's exhausting and then you know i don't think i've accepted what i am capable of and i just need to understand my levels if that if that makes sense because yeah. i'm not what i used to be to pull it bluntly yeah, uh, it makes sense because I um when I was diagnosed, I was diagnosed in twenty seventeen, and it took probably three years, about three years, 
um, to actually speak about it publicly and and to actually other people um, and not meeting many people to start with. So it does, it does take a while um, to like come out your shell and talk about your story to, to other people um, because you find yourself having to explain yourself and probably repeat yourself quite a lot, which is tiring sometimes, um, <laughs> really. Yeah, it is. It is. And there's no one that understands it more than someone else who's got IBD. You, you can explain it to your friends multiple times that you feel tired or fatigued. But, you know, when you get up at 10 a.m. and say to them that you're still tired, especially in like the Navy community, the armed forces, they'd just be like, you're lazy. They don't understand it. And um, it it's shame. not nice to... It's not nice to have your friends, you know, uh, call you lazy or yeah. or whatever, because they don't understand what the fatigue's like until they, which I hope they don't experience it themselves, but no one knows it than someone who's got it. They can empathise, but no one truly knows, do they? No, I think it's wrong from like the armed forces, like the Navy, to, to be like this, because um, it is wrong, isn't it? Because uh, not just an illness, like if you're diagnosed with anything, um, if it's an illness yeah. or not, um, they will not have it. Um, that they won't have people who are autistic. They won't have people who have an illness. It's 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 really upsetting, um, and I think things do need to change for the navy and how the, how they do those things because they could have a really good worker that may not be there all the time, but when they are there, they try their best. And if they can't do it the whole time. They should try to be understanding yeah. about that. So, um, yeah, it is. It's not on. Like even saying you're lazy when when you're not, you can't you can't help it. Yeah, it's it's difficult because um, the armed forces are exempt from the uh, disability uh, equality rules, um, mm -hmm. as in like they're one of the few employers that can deny you due to a disability. Um, because the main goal for them is deployability is it isn't it yeah. you know if it, if you were to go to the war or whatever and you had a flare-up you'd be out of action so that's how they view it worst case scenario awesome. but um there is people i know you know with Crohn's that are in um but okay. with me i i had the hurdle of epilepsy as well uh so that was mine but it depends, you know. Um, obviously, I was young, and uh, but if there's a few I know that are nearing the end of their career in the armed forces that can just do office jobs, and they'll happily keep them in. But it all just goes down to deployability, and it's hard to accept because when you've got that problem, you just feel like, why me or whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, that's how I feel. Um, that's it, yeah. And it's it's accepting it and looking at the bigger picture, you know, of the risks. And they're trying to keep me safe at the end of the day. But now I've left, I can I can see the bigger picture. Whereas at the time, I was just like, I don't want to leave. This isn't fair. But now I've come to accept the fact that I can't be in because it's not safe, basically. Yeah, yeah, I I, I agree. Like like they have their reasons, have their ways. Um, but it is like it is a it, I think like although that they do this that like maybe not in the war setting like uh, let's think of it not in the war um, of course yeah. in the war, of course in the war most people like I mean you'll probably be exempt from um, from being being asked to to join up um, yeah because I think the public or most of the public I think uh, it's around our age are upwards to 60 I believe are the ones that who would be asked and people that are, are exempt can't so I understand that but not in a war setting in, in a way like um like even if you have an illness like just it'd be nice if they could have to give that a try um because I know a person um my friend who's got autism um who's autistic and he he he, he was Going, he was doing all the training for the for the um going into the army and stuff like that and they they said they couldn't he couldn't do one of the last ones because you can't have autism which which is um that that, that was a bit um 
it was not nice, uh, imagine for him because he got, he, I think he got really ill, um, for pushing himself yeah. too hard. I think you do that, um, when you're now me, you want to really impress the, the big, well, the, the big guys that you know, like the, 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 yeah. the, the top ones, and you, um, you push yourself and, um, like it's not the only thing. Like I think lots of places, not just the army, won't accept if you have an illness or or not even an illness. If you have a diagnosis of of something that maybe limits what you can do in the workplace, um, yeah, which isn't is unfair. It's unfair for for those that they can if they can do the job as best as they can. Uh, I think it, that should be good enough. Yeah. And obviously, I wish more employers had that attitude, but it's hard. It's hard to explain because a lot of people don't know what it feels like themselves to be told you can't do this due to your health, even though mentally you know you can do it and want to do it. Um, but like me myself, I had to accept the fact that physically I can't do it. You know, mm. that's a hard thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but yeah, like um, like since then, what have you been been doing? Like um, like like like, how is your current at the moment and everything? Um, so I had um, so I left the navy and I had surgery last uh April, um, to remove the affected area, which was my Crohn's is just limited to my terminal ileum area, um, hence why my symptoms are mainly just pain, and not the typical blood in the stool because it's not that far along the digestive tract to it's hard to explain but it's not near the end of the digestive tract so the blood won't be in your stool if that makes sense okay. um and it, it was only just a, a six inch area that they removed um and just sewed up both ends and uh since then i've been okay you know like I've got fatigue, um, but otherwise I, I'm pretty good, you know, I try and do what I can. Um, I was at uni, I was at uni doing nursing, but as I said, recently I've left um, due to the demands and I'm having to accept what I physically can't do. And, you know, a 12 hour shift on a busy ward is hard for normal people, let alone those with two chronic conditions um which was hard for me to accept because obviously i like the medical profession but yeah so at the moment i'm just thinking of what to do but my crohn's is under control i'm not not on any medication they want to keep me off some for quite a while um and just monitor it basically so i'm doing all right i'm quite fortunate to be how i am at the moment yeah yeah it's, it's, it's good that you're not on medication um because I think as every patient's dream, I think not to be on anything um, like yeah. anything that could put you at risk. And although it helps medication, like I'm on medication myself. Um, I haven't had surgery for my crimes. Um, I, uh, I, 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 I get quite a lot of fatigue. Um, the, um, the pain, well, in 2017, I lost quite a lot of weight. Um, Leading yeah. up to when I got diagnosed in October, I had a kind of lulostopy, uh, and that's how yeah. I found out I had Crohn's and everything. Um, and for me, blood is quite common for me. I'll get that every now and then, um, still. Um, yeah. And, and and yeah, like that, 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 that's pretty common for me, blood. Um, yeah, and, and I lost a lot of weight. I, I got to the point where I couldn't eat um, anything. Um, and when I did, I felt really full. Um, and, and then I got really bad pain. Um, it was like a stabbing, uh, a stabbing acidy feeling in my stomach. So, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that, uh, that wasn't nice. And well, that, that was there for a while and luckily fine to get appointments at hospitals and, and everything to get seen, yeah. uh, which most people will realize that it is a task. <laughs> To, to, yeah to definitely that, now to get that then um but yeah um i suppose i'm quite fortunate i didn't get diagnosed during the pandemic um i got diagnosed before like a couple of years before so um because i know mm. how hard it could be for, for people in the pandemic um 
getting diagnosed because there's uh, really busy and getting appointments extra hard. Yeah, definitely. You know, like I was diagnosed just before and um, I was lucky that I was in the Navy. So um, I was working with doctors and I could get quick appointments and get straight in to be seen. So I was fortunate. But looking back, I probably had symptoms starting from when I was 16. Um, I'd wake up in the night with stomach aches um, and they all the doctors would just say was stomach ulcers because you're stressed about your GCSEs or A levels. Um, yeah, I don't I don't get that as much now, but I don't know whether many others get this. But I'd say, I if I get up at seven, have some breakfast, I'd say about nine half nine, I'll have a stomach ache, and then it'd be gone about twelve o'clock. Um, yeah, yeah. I say that's quite common for me. Um, I don't know whether others get it, but it's annoying more than anything because obviously that's the time when I'm at work and I want to get on with it. But I've got a stomach ache, but then it sort of weans off towards the afternoon. So that's one of the symptoms that I get. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like I, I do now and then probably get a stomach ache. Um, if uh, not like a bad one, as bad as I had like when I was in a flare. Um, yeah, like, I I do have, I don't go to it as much as probably other people, but when I do need to go, I probably need to go. Like, like there's blood in the stool. Um, I have, like, just can't wait card so I can go anywhere. Um, but yeah. if, if they let me in, of course, because it's not um, law. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Should be, though. <laughs> should be, should be law uh, for, for people that need to. Um, but, but, yeah. Um, yeah it's it is hard because like if you're going to the toilet a disabled one and people just look at you weird and it, it, it's a weird one it is definitely you know like if i was to walk up to someone and say i'm disabled you know you get the stereotypical answer well no you're not you look fine um and that's another frustrating point about it yeah. it's just awareness you know and hopefully over time that'll grow and as we've noticed in the last 10-15 years I'd say stoma and disability awareness has probably progressed more than it did in the 20th century in a whole um, so it's getting a lot better but it's got room to grow isn't it yeah yeah I think so I think I think that they say that you're fine because you can walk if you couldn't walk I think it'd be a different thing um it is that thing yeah. isn't it like unless you're in a wheelchair uh don't make grown people in a wheelchair are disabled uh, but i feel like other people can as well um it, it may not be it's like the awareness they're trying to bring it's not all of the appearance uh, is, is in, inside as well um but but even sometimes it is on appearance and, and people don't see it um as well yeah well, yeah, like you said, as I said, it's not all disabilities are visible, are they? So <laughs> no. people need to understand that. <laughs> be nice if they were, though. <laughs> It'd be so much easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it would. Yeah. Yeah, so um, do you do, like, have you done any, like, fundraising for, for Crohn's, like, like, in the past, Dan? Yeah, so um, two weeks ago, I ran 10K for Crohn's and colitis. Um, that was my most recent one. Um, I raised, I think it's over 150 now um, for Crohn's and colitis. Um, I enjoy running, so I thought I may as well add a course to it. Yeah. And um, show, show that every, like, you can do anything as long as you put your mind to it. Um, and... It also shows the other side of that one day I can run 10K and then two days later I can be really ill in bed. Um, and that shows the brutality of a chronic condition, doesn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, it does It does really well because you can do something one day and then another day, you don't know, you, don't, you just don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, do you? Until, uh, no. Sit. Um, no, it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, like was that your own thing then? That uh, that ten k, like you organised yourself, like just you running, or, or was it? Or was it a couple of people doing it with you? Like, how how was that all happening? Um, so, so it was it was 
a big organised 10k. There was over 500 people in it, but I contacted the uh, Crohn's and Colitis charity and asked for a fundraiser pack. I set up a Just Giving page and just cracked on with it myself, really. Um, so I entered the 10k, which was an organised event. It's similar to when you see people, you know, enter London Marathon and then choose to sponsor a charity. Um, but uh, I'm no way can I run a marathon yet. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's hard work a marathon, isn't it? <laughs> mega, mega, you know, I, nah, nowhere near it. I think my next goal is half marathon and just work up in increments. That's my plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've done a couple of fundraisers myself. Like I've done, um, I think it was a two point six challenge a couple of years ago. Um, I did that. Um, yeah, I, I, I did that for um, yeah, Current Lights UK. Um, and it that it was the year I think COVID like struck, like like came and the London market wasn't going to happen. And I I, I was mm. gonna I was gonna go, but they made this as a replacement for that year. So like just do something that involved with those numbers like twenty six or just do uh, like the, the it was all about you have to do something that one uh, like an activity a day for twenty six days, um and I uh, it could be anything it could be even watch Netflix for twenty six minutes, <laughs> um yeah <laughs> but I kind of wanted to keep it active um I I didn't want to do stuff like that <laughs> um, yeah yeah no I get you. Yeah, so I had the trampoline in my garden. It was all kind of garden based. Like I was, I was you know, jump for it could be jump for twenty six times. But on on the last day, I did kind of like a little obstacle course. I did all, all sort of different things, and uh, I found it really fun. I arranged like the target, um, which I, I can't remember what it is now. But I did I overachieved. So um, uh, yeah, that's good then. That, that was good, and yeah, I do. Hopefully, so this year, hopefully, uh, all being well, I want to do the um, I want to do a skydive. Um, I, I might do it for for an autism charity this year, just because I do I've raised so much for um, Crohn's and Colitis UK or all Crohn's charities. I feel like I should maybe try another thing this time. But I've always wanted to do a skydive. But I think, but well, when you're up there, you uh. Like before you're really excited and then the time you get up there you, yeah. look, you look down there and then you're, you're probably gonna feel <laughs> oh, what am I doing this for <laughs> yeah there's no way I'll do a skydive like, I've done the same as you like I've done a 10k before for an epilepsy charity and um I think I might do my next one for help for heroes a charity that has helped me directly um when I was leaving the navy um I just I do it mainly just to prove that I can do stuff and that hmm. a condition doesn't define what we can do and what we are capable of. And that, yeah. that's the main reason I, I do it, as well as the aspect of raising money for charities to help other people. Um, not myself, but I like the fact that it goes and helps other people that are in hard times, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to do it for another charity because I've done it for the same one for quite a lot of events and uh, it'd be nice to just change it, wouldn't it? Like, because um, you kind of dedicate yourself to that charity for a while and then, yeah, just to a different one. But yeah, um, I am, I'm like, I do like roller coasters, so I would say skydive is a good idea. I've done it, I've done an indoor one, but I know doing it in real, for actual real thing, yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, yeah. be a challenge. Yeah, it will be. I like you're not gonna see me doing that. I'll run, but I'm not jumping out of a plane. Yeah, like I and now I think about it and then like because you don't feel it, but um I think the worst bit is actually jumping out. Um I'd say. Um like not from mm. experience, just because you get pushed, don't you? you the guy pushes you yeah. and then yeah. and you're, you're you're free falling and then and then once the parachute thing, you think, oh, I can kind of relax a little bit now. Um, um, but yeah, but yeah, um, I've always I like roller coasters, but I'm I, I, it's like it's the same thing, isn't it? If you go on a roller coaster, you uh, you, you look forward to doing it, and then just to get on it, you think, oh, I don't know what I, what, what I put myself out forward for. Oh, I know. Yeah, the thought of it's good, but actually doing it's not, is it? 
Yeah, I remember the first one I did upside down. I was thinking, oh, oh like I'll do this upside down one. It might be, might be fun. Uh, <laughs> you always have the fear that you're gonna yeah. fall out, don't you? Um, yeah. Uh, different ones because I'm sure one at Alton Towers, like theme park, one's broke down half a dozen times. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 It's it's crazy. It is. I haven't been to Alton Towers in years, but I've been many times. It's only about an hour from me, so hmm. I won't go now. <laughs> no, no. I, I've, I've never really been to many theme parks, but I've been to on right, the good roller coasters and stuff. So, yeah, they are, uh, it's, 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 it's like personal choice if you like that kind of stuff. Um, I, I could just, just imagine that's what, a skydive will be like, like for like just an hour in air. It's only a minute or two, isn't it? You're actually doing it. It's not that long. You'll be alright. <laughs> no, 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 it's not like you see him on telly, and hey, it takes a few minutes, and then then you're down there, um, kind of probably a lot one and one time. You'll probably do it. I wouldn't imagine many people doing it more than once. <laughs> um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Like, I think that'll be it for me. Uh, but, like, uh, the good thing is that the guys take pictures on the way down and I suppose they can record it as well. So, um, it's just... <laughs> and then you'll see people on the bottom, won't you? And then, like, dots <laughs> when you're at the top. Yeah. So, that, that that's fun. Yeah, I'll yeah. still never do it. <laughs> no. Yeah, the, the, like, I don't blame you. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm probably. I think I'm crazy. I'm. I'm putting myself forward to it myself. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. This is for a good cause, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's all for a good cause. Like, um, I aim to try and do it for my birthday this year, but that's all being well, like health wise, and if COVID, yeah, yeah. if COVID's doing all right, like, um, calm down a bit by then. Um, but but yeah, yeah. But yeah. If not this year, sometime. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure. you'll do it eventually. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, so, so Dan, like, um, like what, like, because you, you said that you've, I suppose, like you said that you kind of accepted like having Crohn's a bit more now. Um, like, what's kind of helped you to accept that more, like, like, like more now? Um, that's a good question. You know. <laughs> um, oh. I'll probably say, so, I mean, people have told me a lot and I haven't listened to them. And I think it's me going out and doing it and them being proved right <laughs> has is what's made me accept it. Um, like after my first placement at uni, I ended up in hospital. And I think that was mainly the thing that was telling me, you know, that you can't do what you used to be able to do. Um, and over the past couple of months I've just had it going around in my head you know like what can I do that will keep me safe you know because you don't want to push yourself through something you can't do and potentially something serious happen um, and I think that was the main turning point for me you've got to think long long term rather than short term you know you want something that will keep you safe so you can live a long and happy life, basically. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's it. Like, uh, as much as we have our bad days, we can have our good ones. So it's, it's always important. Like, like, like that like, like that run that you did, like, um, yeah, maybe a few years ago, you might not be able to do that. So, like, like it's good that you've had the courage and determination and your health's been on your side uh, to do that. So, yeah. um, like... It's 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 good fun. Um, just to is is that something you enjoy, like just doing running, like exercise and everything? Yeah. Um. Obviously, I like to keep fit. Um. I wouldn't say I enjoy running, but mm. I go with friends, so I like the social aspect and you know healthy body, healthy mind. I feel that that genuinely helps. Um exercise wise um i'm not saying it helps for everyone but yeah it helps me i like getting out and 
I don't know, it's almost fighting my body in a sense to show that I can do something and be as fit as I was. Um, and it's something to do as well. <laughs> yeah, something to do. Like, you have a day out. Um, like, you ha ha yeah, have a day out, right? Like, it, it's just fun, isn't it? Like, um, I remember going to a walk it event, and I think I've only been to the one. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but I liked it because, like, you had like, everyone walking, and no certain competition. Like, you just walk. Uh, there was a running one, but yeah. I thought for the going for the first time, rather than overdoing myself or sort of having a run just go for a walk because I think it can get your face painted like purple <laughs> most people paint, yeah. paint purple um yeah and and yeah like you meet some good people there they're just like knowing that they're gonna understand what you're talking about because you're you've got either Crohn's or ulcerative colitis IBD there so um it's yeah. good they arrange those these events and um I don't think there's been one for a few years now or like a Crohn's and Clyde's walk, walk, walk it event. But, um, mm. but yeah, I think in the next few years there'll be more and more events, even new ones. And I think they do midnight walks as well. So they, they do really well with raising events. Yeah, they do. They do a lot more now for the mental health, uh, where they tell men to get out and all meet up and go for a walk, don't they? Mm. Um, that's a big one that I'm seeing a lot in more in more towns is uh, they might do a Sunday or a Monday at seven o'clock and they all meet up and just talk. And the main message is get talking, isn't it? Yeah. Talk about it, whether that be mental health, physical um, disabilities, anything really, um, because you don't want to keep it up bottled, bottled up inside how you feel, do you? No, no. I think it's really important, but especially in men because they um mental health is I suppose not talked about as much because of like like you say like hiding emotions inside of you and not venting them mm. um probably especially if get the diagnosis of Crohn's not um saying how you feel like not saying much about it you kind of have to learn about yourself yeah. don't you like um yeah. I got I don't know about you but when I was diagnosed I just got given a leaflet and said I've got Crohn's so, to go home <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, that's about it I got the same you know I, I got given a leaflet I got told what it was and obviously then I got admitted to hospital mm. um but I don't know I was so overwhelmed I didn't know what to say you know because I'd just been admitted to hospital in wherever I in Portsmouth where, where I was based so I've only got my mates down there really um and yeah, I didn't know what to think. Um, I had so many questions, but I couldn't get them out. Um, so I think that's why it took me so long to accept it. Yeah. Yeah, I was the same because I was just sitting there, like, daydreaming, I suppose. Like, um, because I heard them in, in the kind of lost period, the consultant say her Crohn's, and I actually came out and said, I, I said, I heard Crohn's, and I was correct. Even though I had no clue what it was. I was just hearing um, from my sedation. I, I did hear things and had that word. And, um, but but yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Like straight away. Um, mm. Like we all go home. Like I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I I went and you go on Google, don't you? And then type out about what Crohn's is and and everything on, on there. Yeah, I did the same. You know, I Google and then um, as you said, you see the worst case scenario and. Uh, you assume, you know, that you'll end up with a stoma. And obviously there's a lot of people that don't and never need one, but it's not a bad thing whether you do need one, you know, as long as it keeps you fit and healthy, then yeah, go with the treatment that's best for you. Yeah, well, I think even up to the time, if I ever did get one, I would be fearful of it because, although it would help me. Yeah, same. Um, I, know, I, I know it's going to help you and stuff, but, I don't, it, it's, it's start, it's like your diagnosis starting all over again or getting a new diagnosis on top, isn't it? Because you're... Yeah, it's a new new acceptance, isn't it? Because yeah. your life's totally changed physically from what you were used to as a kid. Yeah, because you've never had a stoma before and 
you get this this stoma bag, and especially if you're going swimming, um, you don't like, for example, you, you don't want to be looked at, um, but you will be looked at. You know you're going to be looked at, so you've got to kind of deal with that in a way, um, because yeah, like like it's it's, it's, it, it's all down to how you about how you think about things. If you think the worst of things, if you yeah. think if you think, hang on a minute, that person's not going to like this. Am I going to care? Or am I just going to not, like, it's, it's all about that, like, how you are and how serious you take things. Yeah, that's right. You can, like, I'm the same. And I'll openly say I don't care what other people think, but I think everyone does secretly deep down, don't they? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's hard because I, I I love seeing people raise awareness of Soma's um on, on social media and stuff I think they're really brave because I don't know if I would be able to do that um yeah um it'll take a while to open up about it I'm, I'd probably say I do have one and everything but maybe not show it like in the flesh <laughs> like most people do don't they um so yeah that takes a big step yeah I mean, it's hard to comment isn't it because mm. we we're both fortunate enough to not be at that stage but yeah you never know yeah we, we never know because um getting diagnosed i suppose at a young age um in your teens the late teens there, there are like, you see like the numbers about how people get surgery in your lifetime so like um mm. I, i'm fortunate at the moment i've had surgery before but not for crimes um yeah um it was something else when i when i was younger i think i had um I, was, I had, yeah, yeah, I had some sort of surgery. I don't remember. I remember going to having it done, and I remember how surgery feels like. I, I know no one remembers what it feels like. What I mean is like how fast. <laughs> like you go to sleep. They tell you go to sleep, then you wake up. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So it feels like I woke up. I remember because I, I woke up with surgery, and I, I, I was thinking, hang on a minute, I'm in a dream or something because I'm I'm in the bed. <laughs> Um, and yeah. I've got things attached to me and stuff, and then um, no, no one's in the room, and then uh, you don't know what's happening. But um, yeah, it's it's hard, isn't it? Um, yeah, we all fear that those are the two main things: either surgery or stoma bag. Yeah, I'm the same, and I've had surgery twice, and as people know, it's it's not a nice experience, and um. I think maybe the trauma of my second surgery has made me worry to have surgery again because I don't want it again. Um, but, you know, you never know what happens. And if it's the difference between life and death, you're obviously going to choose it, aren't you? So. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, and the thing like with stomas, there's so many the different types, like there's different types of Crohn's. Um, there's different types yeah. of stomas. Like you, you have different forms, permanent, not permanent um yeah and yeah you have to it's another learning thing isn't it like um it's not not only for Crohn's and IBD that people have stomas as well like other other things as well that people have one for yeah so it is um it raises awareness of Crohn's at the same <clears> time <throat> but like I, I I I always say to people that come and speak to me if they have a stoma I always say to them that I uh, appreciate what they're doing because I would say that I don't know how I would be. Like I've heard it's yeah. saved so many people's lives having the same as well. Um, yeah. So it can be a life change for some people, and and there are good things about it that some people don't have to have medication, um, as well as some people who don't have a stoma don't have to have medication as well. But um, mm. I think that is a plus side when if you have one or not. Like if you're not on medication, uh, because it's it's like it's it's good because you're not like because for me I'm on medication that like cancer patients takes which um I take so I take as a um Humira so and those really dampen my immune system and in a pandemic era it's not not it's not ideal <laughs> to be on this kind yeah, of medication yeah. um because like you don't know if you caught COVID you don't know how it, it's going to be worse really bad um so always having to be careful in before the pandemic people 
of RBD, isn't it? Because you could anything like skin cancer, like like the sun, having with certain sun cream, yeah. all these things you have to take in precautions. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I was on azathioprine and it didn't agree with me at all. Um, it made me quite ill. I ended up in hospital. So, yeah. yeah, after that, after that, they were like, "Well, your inflammation's quite low, so I guess we can just monitor you and keep you on nothing for now." So I'm quite fortunate in that aspect. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm always going up on the levels of azathioprine and down. <laughs> like i've been yeah. on ever since really uh like of course when on steroids yeah. to start with um i think most people do <laughs> um yeah they're um, horrible <laughs> yeah yeah and then yeah they're not nice steroids are they um no, no. all different reactions like could get spots puffy face <laughs> um yeah the spots the spots is what annoyed me like all over my back everywhere it was horrible yeah, that, that, I, I, yeah, that, 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 that was, they are irritating, but I was fortunate when I came off them and then I went on straight on to Biologics infusions and then that didn't work out for me. I was on that about a year and then had, yeah. bad, had a bad reaction um, from antibodies and everything and then went on to Amira. So I've been on Amira for a good couple of years. So, um, yeah, I know you can't stand medication forever, so I know at some point something's going to change. Some way, some way or another. Yeah, yeah. Things always do. <laughs> exactly. You, you yeah. just don't know, you know. You just got to go with the flow. Yeah, yeah you do, don't you? You have, to, you have to go with the flow, see, see where your path leads you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So, Dan, uh, before we go, um, is there, like, any last words that you want to say to, to, to everyone listening, like maybe any advice or, or anything before before we go? Um, yeah, I'd say learn to accept. Um, and it doesn't matter how long that takes, you know, whether some people accept it, their condition within a few months or within a few years. I think acceptance is a big part of being able to manage your condition. Um, and personally, that's how I learn what my capabilities are and understanding my condition. I think that's the main thing. And um, mm. at the same time, accept it, but also don't let it let it limit what you want to do. Um, I could easily just not go out running, but I want to do it to prove people wrong. So I accept that some days I'm not 100%, but I also don't let, don't let it rule me and on the days that I'm fine, I'll go out and do what I want. That's it. I think yeah. that's really good because we have got to learn to get uh, learn to uh, accept like, our crimes because it, however long it takes, like you get there in the end. I think. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get there in the end, basically. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, well, Dan, I hope you've enjoyed it because uh, it's been a really good uh, conversation today. Yeah, good chat, mate. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Dan. Cheers. Thank you.